We are in for a lecture by Professor Małgorzata Binkowska, who represents the Puławy Apiculture Institute by a research uh, institute. And just a moment. Privately and professionally, she's been a B person promoting the latest fundamental and practical uh, knowledge and research connected to beekeeping. Her bee interests are focused on improving the methods of selection, uh, selection of queens and drones, and artificial fertilization. As uh, an expert, she is particular about uh, developing strains that are uh, impervious to Varro Destructor, which destroys bee uh, colonies all over the world. She runs tests as part of a European pilot program which promotes and implements um, Varro's resistant bees. Thanks to the cooperation with the best epi scientists, the professor actively participates in the development of Polish epiculture and uh, beekeeping in our society. So, the floor is yours. Thank you for such a beautiful invitation and welcoming most cordially. Thank you for our participation in this project, which is so important for the bee science. I can share with you my modest knowledge on the bees that can be resistant to varroses, and perhaps they will be in future bred, and we will have bees without any uh, pharmaceuticals to fight that parasite. That parasite came to Europe in the 1970s and we had to change our approach to uh, beekeeping. There were many losses of colonies and this parasite found fantastic um, conditions for development in the brood of our bees. We used various uh, chemicals and some natural substances, various active and synthetic, active also synthetic um, substances. However, these substances uh, were permeating into the products, which could be dangerous for both the bee and the human consumer. Due to that long-term use of antivirosis, uh, means we ran one-way selection so that the parasite, the mite, became uh, resistant to uh, some of those, which increased the costs and the outlay of work on keeping the colonies healthy and on having the economic balance proper, so that as to pay back for the work we put into keeping our uh, hives healthy. So now all the beekeepers would wish that the Apis mellifera becomes resistant to this parasite. L looking for such populations uh, that have some features of resistance that can be fully resistant, and uh, we should have those in our um, colonies in our hives. Yet, before I pass on to how you can run such selection in your bee breeding, we first need to answer a range of questions. I will answer them one by one. What do we know about uh, bee resistance to varroses? Are there any such bees in Europe? Other methods of selecting bees that would be resistant to varroses? I'll also try to answer the question that I ask myself and that the scientific uh, team that participates in Eurbest asks what the costs of such selection are, because we hardly ever realize what the cost is. And of course, I'd like to answer, I'd like to show you the results of the opinion polls, which are 
tell you whether the uh, beekeepers are satisfied with the material they introduce to their um, apiaries. For many years we've had information that there are bees in the world that show features of resistance to viroses. The first is its original carrier, Abyscerana. Those bees lived very long with that parasite and there was a balance between uh, the host organism and the parasite. Why? Because they developed a mechanism of coping with that parasite so that uh, the roses only entered the drone brood and bees showed certain hygienic behaviors that they did not allow those drones to break out. If these were working broods, then the bees would open and then close those cells again so that this influenced on that uh, lava to behave normally and in consequence the um, insects were healthy. So there were some hygienic behaviors we are going to discuss now which are now used in that breeding. Then come South African uh, honeybees which were first imported to South America Unfortunately, they set free there and there is this Africanized population of highly mellifluous but also highly aggressive bees. And they also had some hygienic behaviors towards the brood that was infested by the roses. Well, uh, they have shorter uh, life within the cells and it means that uh, there will be no um, females ready for reproduction which decreases the reproductivity of the parasite. Also it was found that in the brood of those African bees in Brazil only 43 percent of the females are reproduced, while in European populations 76% of females reproduced. Other than that, there are also those African bees that are present in Africa, which are really resilient to that parasite, but probably this is because they don't have epiculture as developed as in Europe or elsewhere in the world because they really have a swarm economy and this swarm economy certainly reduces the viroses population. Similar case is in Ethiopia and in Ethiopia the bee that they have there has this characteristic that the females <laughs> have very low reproduction, the females that are infested with uh, the roses. We can also mention the Apis mellifera, mellifera capensis in West Afri Southwest Africa. The time of uh, the uh, locked-in brood lasts a day shorter and this means that there would be fewer females uh, infected with viruses that would be ready for reproduction. Uh, attempts were made to cross capensis with European bee and they behave uh, similarly but we can't mention any mixes because after mixing those capensis bees take over control over the family so they behave like parasites. What is now the situation in Europe? In the time we have fought the roses, have there been any bees that have been saved that can function without any veterinary practices or even biotechnical practices? Well, there are multiple cases of that type. Even in the 1990s, American researchers 
brought from a Primorsky oblast in Russia, the Krainska B, which uh, showed features of being resistant to that might. Those mechanisms are not yet clear, although we go on running the studies. Those bees are compared to other populations that have survived without treatment of varosis. Nevertheless, it was uh, found that there are many factors that influence that, especially an increased number of such uh, females in, of roses that have Mm, that, that lay eggs later, which doesn't let those uh, females to grow to their sexual maturity. Similarly, in the USA, in Arnott Forest, there are bees that have never undergone any uh, varus destructive um, practices. But when attempts were made to breed queens from those colonies, unfortunately, in our um, apiculture, those bees did not repeat that immunity. So there is such a belief that they developed certain behaviors that they let them survive without that parasite. There have been such bees also in Europe, in two locations in France, in Le Mans and in Avignon. They have survived. This was a bond test which we are going to mention. Average age of survival was around eight years, but some colonies survived 15. Uh, bees from these populations can find, can identify the cells that were infected by the parasite and clean them. They uh, remove the parasite together with the brood on which it parasited. That's called uh, verosa sensitive hygienic and high value of this mm, parameter allows to uh, reduce the number of parasites. Of course, there is also the influence of the environment on the parasite. Both Le Mans and Avignon are hardly agricultural, so these are conditions that are very good, very uh, conducive to the development of bee colonies. In Norway, there was such a population surviving more than 19 years in the Ostlandet region. Also here, the hygienic behavior, the VSH parameter was very important. Bees knew how to discover and how to uh, remove the cells that were infected by viroses. In Europe, we have also what we call forest bees that live in the forests, and we still don't know what mechanisms are present in them, and it's not known whether they are feral bees or whether these are populations that have escaped, some swarms that have escaped from a regular commercial apiaries and that made forests their homes. For a number of years, a mass selection was made, so-called bond test, live or die, which meant that in a huge bee population, bees were not treated at all, and those that survived were selected for further uh, breeding. On Gotland in Sweden, after six years of bond test, there were few families that survived. Nevertheless, after this breeding continued from the bees that survived, the losses dropped to 20%. Initially, they were 80%, and then in this population of the survivors, there were only around 20%. And there was also an observation made that there were plenty of uh, infertile females, ones that did not have progeny in the cells with a brood, 
and varosa females uh, laid their eggs somewhat later, which resulted in their daughters not maturing. So certain behaviors keep on repeating. These are the behaviors that we know from the bees that developed regular um, such uh, practices. Mr. Kafus in uh, France first worked with Tunisian bees, Apis mellifera intermisa. Once they imported them to France, they compared the resistance of the local and the important bees, and infestation of adult bees dropped below 5%. And we assume that 3 to 5% is the level of infestation that calls for uh, treatment. But let's say late in autumn, there are also uh, Blackier uh, bees and we have, uh, I believe, Dutch uh, researchers working on them. In 2007 and 8, they developed that breeding program, which they called the Darwinist Black Box. They compared the Gotland bee and also those hybrid populations, those mixes of French uh, colonies from around Amsterdam. And they have those uh, populations where without treatment, infestation ranges from 5 to 13 percent. So there is progress. However, in these progress, they also found hygienic behaviors that have the um, bees remove the broods infested by the roses, but not in all populations. So the mechanisms have not been fully explained, but they have been developed by bees still. As you can see, the impact on infestation of the families is uh, multifactorial. For that reason, if we wanted to breed bees that are resistant to virosis, we must not only look at the resistance parameters, but also all the other ones that concern the um, advantages we have from the bees. And there are plenty of uh, factors that influence that. Climate, for example, I didn't say that in Brazil, on an island, there were Italian uh, bees that lived for 25 years without fighting the parasite. When they tried to move them back to the European continent, they did not repeat that feature. So definitely the climate on that island made an impact on those bees not yielding to the roses. It's hard to discuss selection of bees here for mm, infection in case of very large bee density because we see reinvasions and it takes a lot of work to avoid additional infestations and additional infections by the mites that would uh, be transferred together with bees to a hive. So that's it. Also, there is the impact of the types of flora around and adjustment of bees to the environment. At the moment, to speak about keeping the mm, colonies that are infected by the roses, you need to mm, follow its development or try to manage it or try to use assessment of so-called resistance parameters in your breeding. These include grooming behavior, that's how bees clean themselves, either they can clean themselves of the roses or sister bees can help in cleaning one another. This is also studying the behaviors of hygienic behavior, studying hygienic behaviors towards the brood you can use the pin test, you can also assess the behavior of bees towards the brood that's been infected by the roses and testing the fertility of the females as well as closing and opening of the cells that are infested with the roses. 
and then may have an impact on lowering the size of the population in such a bee family. And all that makes an impact on the reduction and selection uh, towards that. It all reduces the population of the roses and it can also give you more satisfaction from having your family colonies and um, in the breeding programs that selection really included the assessment of those use parameters. In Poland we didn't assess those, um, didn't include the resistance parameters. Now many breeders uh, assess hygienic behaviors based on pin test and uh, it means that you assess how quickly this damaged brood is removed by breaking it with a pin. So with selection you shorten the time when bees will clean those cells. In some countries selection for that um, factor has been run long and it has brought very good results. Another parameter is studying the fertility of roses females because we know that this non-reproduction of mites, SMR, has significant connection with the development of the mite population and can be inherited. It would be hard to run that for the breeders who breed the bees. It's rather a task for scientific units. Nevertheless, with this close cooperation, we can assess this parameter. Another parameter is VSH, which is varose sensitive hygienic, which is removal of the larva from the cells together with the uh, varosa females and their progeny. Because we know that then we will reduce the population of the parasite, so it would be good to monitor the level of this hygienic behavior. Another parameter that should be monitored and evaluated when we are doing our breeding is recapping, namely unca uncapping and uncapping again of the brood that has been infested with the parasite. It is very easy to do because as soon as we uncap a 10 day old brood and 10 day old pupae, then on the caps from the inside, we will see whether they have been uncapped by the bees because we will see the wax without the uh, external layer that is a result of the transformation of the larva into the pupa. And the mechanism here is about uncapping and recapping again the cell, and this way breaking the reproductive cycle of female mites, because then we will, they will not have uh, a progeny that uh, would infest the following cells. So this way we reduce the mortality, the loss of the colony. Moreover, we have different grooming behaviors that have to be taken into account, which are also very difficult to assess. We can only observe them. So mutual grooming of honeybees, meaning removing of parasites from each other, or whether the females can do self-grooming, auto-grooming. When we select the bees for Varroa resistance, so the ones we would like to select for this resistance, what is important is to control the development of the mite population. As a result, we absolutely need to regularly monitor the size of the population of mite in a colony. If we do not want to lose a colony, we can introduce uh, different procedures, mechanisms earlier by eliminating infested bees uh, from the colony. On the other hand, we can control the size of the mite population and select such colonies for further reproduction with lowest population of the parasite. 
in some natural bee populations, for instance in African bees, the cells with brood are slightly slower, uh, smaller, sorry. And there was a theory that perhaps the size of the cells has an impact on the growth of the population. However, it seems that in fact, it is not about the size of the cell, but the amount of space for the parasite to develop and to grow. Recently, we have witnessed a plan to select uh, of bees for virus resistance. Sorry. Together with selecting the bees uh, for viral resistance. But as we know, virosis is a vector disease for viral diseases. So by selecting viral resistant bees, we will definitely increase uh, the resistance to viruses. So uh, everything is very important. If we are to introduce such parameters to breeding programs, then perhaps we would be able to achieve such a B. Of course, in our Polish conditions, it will probably be very difficult, although we do have tools for this, because thanks to the fact that we have a very well-developed artificial insemination in Poland, we can accelerate the breeding progress by controlling the breeding. And as you could see in Fanny's presentation, they have problems with artificial insemination of the queens that would expedite and accelerate the process, the breeding process. Is anything done in Europe regarding the selection of uh, bees for varroa resistance? The answer is yes. In the last three years, we have been uh, running a huge project called Your Best, and it has uh, been uh, run by a consortium funded by the European Commission. A lot of tests have been performed in seven countries and the tests were performed by 130 beekeepers. So we had the same team mentioned by Fanny in the previous presentation doing an even greater test. But Bichler was the leader, which means we had a, here a continuation of colors and the smart bees that was an even previous project. And uh, so we continue this project in order to see whether in Europe we do have uh, varroa resistant bees and is it possible. And uh, the team of experts in your best identified and selected 23 lines of bees belonging to six subspecies, including including hybrid bees that were basically coming from the survivors, survivors of the populations, uh, survivors from the populations that were not treated against var varroses. And the evaluation was performed in two ways. First, we had stationary evaluation where the beekeepers compared a few different lines of bees in the same apiary. Uh, that was, sorry, the researchers, while the beekeepers compared one of the selected lines coming from these 23 lines selected by the consortium with their own resources used in their own apiaries. And I'd like to say that uh, within Colors we have analyzed 625 colonies, and here, in this project, UVEST, we managed to test 3,500 colonies, so the experiment was huge. And you can see the preliminary results of this test on your best website. But let me present you a bit of it. On the left side, you can see the level of infestation of colonies by the parasite. We performed it based on the number of females in 10 grams, uh, mite females in 10 grams of bees. So in autumn 2019, in your best populations, uh, as we call the 23 lines, the infestation was higher than in colonies present in experimental apiaries, namely the uh, resources belonging to the beekeepers. It was also slightly higher in spring 2020. However, in summer, the Eurobest populations had the 
colony infestations much lower compared to the resident bees. What does this mean? This means uh, that there are certain mechanisms as a result of which the growth of Faroa population is slightly lower in the 23 selected lines compared to populations that do not have these traits. On the right side of the slide you can see a chart that shows five countries, Germany, Greece, France, Italy and Poland, where these populations were tested and uh, we found that in some lines the infestation of colonies did not exceed 3%. What does this mean? And this is very important, because if the infestation in autumn or summer exceeds 3%, then we have to uh, include some, ver ver some uh, treatment. However, the families that had not been treated from the beginning of the observation in summer the following year had the, the same low uh, infestation level, not exceeding the threshold. Plus, some of the lines with a very low infestation were very, very productive as well, which is interesting from the perspective of a beekeeper, because resilience, resistance is one thing, but productivity is another thing, so um, how much honey they produce and their low swarming tendencies. Per resistance uh, features were also tested in the stationary part of the test where we compared the lines in different countries, so we have been exchanging the material among us, and we have seen that the hygienic behaviors do correlate very strictly with the level of infestation of the colonies by Varroa. The more hygienic behavior expressed by different types of behavior, the lower infestation of the parasite. For example, if we look at the VSH, Varroa sensitive hygiene, if this value was growing, that coincided with the pin test results. Namely, if the bees were cleaning more cells that were artificially destroyed by us, then the VSH was higher and the infestation of the colonies by Varroa destructor was lower. Going back to hygienic behaviors, uh, the VSH, namely finding, uh, allocating, identifying and removing the infested uh, brood. The high level of this parameter also had an impact on the Varroa infestation because the infestation was lower in the colonies where the value of VSH parameters was much higher. However, we were hoping to see a correlation between this hygienic behavior and the fertility of females. However, in this case, we have not uh, seen the correlation between VSH and SMR. And speaking of the selection, it's worth mentioning the, its costs. We have uh, performed interviews with beekeepers who were selecting, sorry, who were running these observations. The observation lasted two years, and we found out then that testing one colony on average means cost reaching 193 euro, which is an average, but it can be as high as 273 euro in Germany to 85 euro in Greece. But this is all related probably to the cost, to the labor cost. Because in different countries, the labor cost is lower or higher. In uh, our countries, uh, in countries like Poland and Greece, the labor cost is much lower. Still, 20% of the costs uh, were allocated to observing, analyzing hygienic behavior related mostly to the pin test, namely performing the pinching the bird by the pin. So this was the highest, um, that was a big, part, a big share, but the highest share, namely 60%, was uh, the evaluation of uh, the colonies, uh, looking at S, M, R, R, E, C and V, S, H. So viral sensitive behavior, recapping, 
and monitoring uh, mite reproduction, suppression of mite reproduction. So this was the first research looking at the cost of selection of bees towards varroa resistance. Speaking of queens, do beekeepers have got access to such queens? Well, yes, they do, but we wanted to ask if they are happy with the queen material that is available in Europe. And we asked them, what are they happy about most or least? So we are looking at different parameters like swarming tendencies, uh, aggressiveness, efficiency, performance and resistance. So we found out that uh, the beekeepers, European beekeepers, want to buy queens that are very productive but also very resistant. So they want these two traits the most. However, they're the least happy with disease resistance because unfortunately there is no resistance achieved yet, especially varroa resistance, because this selection does last very long. Still, 50% of clients do trust the selection as a very important tool, or in fact the only tool that uh, is available to achieve a bee that can be kept uh, without uh, eradication of the parasite. And interestingly, which was uh, very surprising for me, and I found it very satisfying. In fact, the level of the acceptance was higher in countries with a very long beekeeping tradition. And Poland has a very long tradition of beekeeping and a very long tradition of breeding queens. Sadly, the prices of queens that are commercialized do not cover the cost of selection because the average cost of a queen in Europe is almost uh, 23 euro. And of course, this is the average. These costs uh, differ from uh, about 8 euros in Poland to 37, 38 euro in France. As I said, just like in case of selection, here, the biggest uh, share of the cost are the labor costs, which do differ among the countries. And uh, sadly, the cost, the price of one queen does not cover not the production cost, not to mention the selection cost, so it does not compensate the efforts of the breeder who work a lot uh, on evaluating the material selected by them. Conclusions uh, are the following. And the most important ones are the following. Selection and breeding of honeybees is a way to increase the yield, the productivity, and decrease losses and improving the health of bees. As a result, thanks to the fact that beekeepers can introduce genetic material of uh, very high productivity to their apiaries, they can uh, um, achieve economic success in uh, this area. Of course, with this selection, we have to take into account the adaptation of bees to local environmental conditions, because here we see a very strong um, um, combination of different factors like genotype and the environment. So we do need breeding structures and cooperation covering both the breeders and the beekeepers, and we have we need the participation of researchers because not all traits can be evaluated by the breeders themselves, like SMR or VSH. The selection for resistance is extremely costly, unfortunately, but the criteria that I take into account are very important indeed. So these costs borne by the breeder to select for these traits should be compensated somehow. We 
reached a conclusion as a result of our experiment that the market of queens should be perhaps facilitated somehow, improved, because there is a big need for queens that are very resistant. But then, on the other hand, the price for such a queen does not cover the cost of selection for very resistance. Hence, we should find a solution here to maybe co-finance the production of high-quality queens with varroa resistance traits. Beekeeping and bee breeding require support, and we should definitely be striving to cooperate and uh, try to receive special co-financing for the sector of bee breeding. I believe it is possible. We are, I'm very happy that we could participate in this research and that I could uh, present to you some information. A lot of information can be found on your best website. There's different publications about it in writing right now or available already, both uh, in uh, impact factor scientific um, magazines and more popular ones. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you very much for the very interesting uh, presentation. Very, very interesting uh, aspect has been discussed. And uh, this is something very important for all of beekeepers, because unfortunately we do deal frequently with the parasite and we have to fight it. This is why we have a lot of questions from our audience. So now we will listen to the questions. Yes, the, our chat went absolutely crazy. We have question from our sponsors. Mr. Miroslav Pietrzakubiak asks, what do you think about the controller for varroa eradication? Controller of Professor Wilgram Meyer from Austria. This thermal method has been described frequently as a very efficient method, but it is very expensive. Yes, varroa does not like high temperatures, and we can see it clearly looking at uh, the fact that in uh, countries of warmer climate, bees have less problems with this parasite. So basically it's enough to increase the temperature by a few degrees, and indeed that could solve the problem. But I have not seen a very functional, usable, well, I'm not sure what word to use best here. I mean something that a beekeeper could use without a huge cost, but with higher temperature. What I saw was about removing the bees to a heater, so when the infestation is the highest, when we have the peak development of varroses, when varroa attacks the bees, which happens in July, and the time when the bees are um, getting prepared for winter, and then there is no, of course, no plants, and they start stealing the honey because it's well difficult. Still, that would be a very good solution. However, we don't really know how to do it exactly so that it is functional for apiaries, so that it is uh, applicable easily for each and every beekeeper. So far, we can treat single colonies like it. Thank you, Professor, for this extensive answer. I would like to say that our audience were saying hello to you very, very frequently. Thank you. First hellos are coming from the Pan-European Beekeeper Club. Oh. I'm very, very happy. Thank you so much. That's so nice. But another question. If you were supposed to make a bet, what animal would you bet for the next uh, mass invasion? And uh, of course, we're talking about uh, the, a different big problem for the bees. Uh, what would you bet? for not Varroa. What would be the next biggest enemy after Varroa? Well, a very tricky question, and to be honest, I have no clue what to say. 
I personally how to say that I'm afraid of all pathogens or other invasive diseases that could attack our own bees because maybe we've had enough of that. Isn't that right? But I'm definitely, to be honest, most afraid of pesticides because perhaps we would be able to manage different threats coming from nature but not coming from globalization and monocultures in agriculture and the lack of uh, pollen and nectar sources. So we have to make sure that our bees are not starving. That's most important for me. Thank you very much, Professor, for answering this question. Next question. We know that we have three genotypes, of, a few genotypes of bees, but maybe do we have different genotypes of varroa destructor? Well, yes. There's a lot of uh, genotypes, or phenotypes, in fact, uh, of uh, varroa. Well, who knows? I don't. I'm, lo I'm not looking at uh, varroa destructor from molecular side, so it's hard for me to say, but yes, it is highly possible. Moreover, if we have hybrids in beekeeping, we can have a hybrid and crossbreds in varroa. It's not that we have only one female entering a cell, giving birth to only one male that is then fertilizing its own sister. Because if we have two females that can, that can have progeny, we may see we may witness copulation between individuals that are not uh, that are not families. As a result, we have heterosy, which increases infestation. So I'm guessing that this could be the case, and I guess this is how it is. So this could be the case. Thank you very much, Professor. And uh, I see that uh, we are controversial. What drugs are best for viruses, Professor? To be honest, I would not use any drugs, any medications for viruses. I would uh, rather try to steer the development of bee colony. There are different methods of uh, viral eradications. For instance, in uh, Poland, in Silesia region, we have beekeepers that do not use any medications, they use biotechnological procedures, so it seems to be possible. I would like uh, to send you, send everyone back to our publications of myself and Anya Gaida. We do not have time to talk about these biotechnological methods. However, you can choose certain biotechnological methods and techniques, but if you want to use any drugs, then if you use biotechnological biotechn products, you can use a um, preparation that is least uh, destructive for the bees and does uh, not uh, uh, harm the products. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. I would like to thank the organizers cordially for the conference organized that great, and I'm very happy I could participate in it. Thank you very much for your participation. Thank you for the very interesting presentation.